Welcome to lesson 9 of getting started with Cabmaster software. Today we're going to go through pricing. Now this can be a convoluted area, can be very simple, can be very convoluted. Depends on how you want to do it. The main areas to go to, drawing properties, down to pricing. Now this is where you can start. Um, where we're going to go, I'm going to go through bits at a time. I might actually start in the pricing markup page. This is how you actually turn on what we want to price and how you want to price. So once you get this bit right, you can then know what the next bit to do. Because for example, this is what you're actually going to price. So at the moment, no, nothing's going to price because everything's off. If I was to go, I want to do linear meter price. And the linear meter rates for my floor cupboards is $185. And my overheads are $165. And my tall cupboards are $295. The pricing is not overly relevant. I'm just throwing numbers in right now. But if I was to do that, and then say I want to have a markup of level 1, 2, 3, 4, so say let's go for a 20% markup, 30, 40, and 80% markup. That will now work and price my cabinets because it just looks at all my floor cupboards, wall, tall cupboards, works at which one's which, multiplies that by linear meter rate, and says this is how much it's going to cost per, um, per linear meter of cupboard. That's quite easy. Now, just to jump around a little bit, level 1, 2, 3, 4. When I go to job setup, I choose my client. The very first thing you do when you put it in, you go about client, choose your customer. There you go, level one. I'm going to client table here. This is what we're looking at. These are my four levels, level one, two, three, four. That's the level of markup that we actually got. So we go back to pricing, markups. These are my, and you can actually call these, um, you can call these whatever you like, mates, mates rates, you know, builder, whatever you, builder, you can add in your, a whole tax, whatever you want to add in there. Point is, that's what these four levels here, I guess. Got mates rates, builder rates. Uh, these can be positive or negative. So you can go, actually, I'm going to give you a 10% a 10% discount, or I'm going to give you a 30% increase. Depends on how you price. This is a very personalized area. We do a whole lot of different things in a lot of different areas because it's all personalized to you. How do you do pricing? I can't say you need to do this. The question is, how do you do this? Um, so this is where you need to work out how do you price, do you, do you go in with a, a large price and discount it for the here, so you go okay this one here gets done at zero, that's my, my default rate, then I give say 10%, um, 30% and 50% discount on that, or do I go no I start with this and I'm going to give a, go the other way, yeah, 20, 40, 50 and 90 or something. How do you price? Do you do linear meter pricing? Can you mix and match? Absolutely. Um, I can do a fixed price, or I can do a carcass price, I can mix and match all these. So linear meter doesn't have to be linear meter, that could be used as a installation rate. So um, you know, you might leave these on, on zeros and go my linear meter price, all my base cupboards, they cost me 50 bucks a meter to install, and these ones here cost me the same, and the tall ones a little bit bigger, they're going to cost me 80 bucks a meter to install. If you're paying an installer, it might be something like that you can mix and match with other things as well. So we're going to say, I don't waste my time with that. I'm just going to do it per material. So this is where you need to know from the beginning, how do you price coming to here? Then what do you do from here? So markup's easy. That's just the four names. What do you want to call them? This one here is where, what, what am I pricing? How am I pricing? What do I want to turn on? If you want to do a turn on or your, yeah, your, everything you buy in, it's normally easier to to manufacture the price those things because I'm buying them in, that's what it cost me, that's what's going to sell. Um, so you can do that quite happily and turn on all these things. So if you want to turn on all your hardware, your PC items and add labour to it and things like that, you can turn on all these and add on markups for those as well. So And you can again mix and match, so a linear mate could be used for something else. Um, so let's say we're going to do it like this, we're going to turn on all the materials, the hardware. Okay, so that if that's the case, we need to go back to material hardware. This is where you get all the different types. And we've gone through um, table edits before in one of the earlier lessons. And we all, I said then use the form, the table is much more complicated. In this case, it's actually not the same. For an example, if you want to edit a runner, we don't have a runner form, we just have the table because the standard runner, while there's a lot of information in here and a lot of all this through here, none of it's relevant apart from this one field here, this, this column. And all you want to do is go in here and go, okay, this one here costs me um, $75, and this one's you know, $73. Oops, if you click on it correctly, it'd be better. $73. Um, this one here, you know, is $72. And you can just put in all your pricing for each one of these, and this is the most common one. This one here we get for $50. Bucks. Um, this one here is you know, $55. Whatever it is, you put in all your pricing for these ones here. And I'm just now throwing numbers in, and these are all the same. And, and that one you can't get, so that's fine. 
that says invalid length. You do that, I've just added all the pricing to that runner. So as long as you know what they are, that's easy to do. Um, so these ones here, hardware. Again, you've got your hardware table in here or your form. So you've got to look at which one in runners, definitely easy to use a table in this regard. For the hardware, generally it's easy to go through here. So what, what is it? Um, I'm going to use my, my, my buffer pads, cool. They're going to cost me like three cents each. Easy. Um, do I add a labor on for those? So it, not for those ones, I wouldn't. But for something else, yeah, absolutely, you might want to do that. So um, you can add in your pricing into, into your hardware um, handles. Same thing again. I've got my handles. I can go and edit an existing handle. Um, next, choose the handle you want to do. It's a handle. What is it? It's a this one here. Um, and this again, you can put in there your details, finish, and then I've got my pricing. Uh, cost. This is going to cost me you know three dollars seventy-five. Um, I can add a markup in here, or I can actually go. Um, I can add labor to it as well. We can add a markup in your, yeah, so you know what this is, and you can add your markup later on. Um, so you can do things like that as well. So you can add a markup at handle level, or you can add a markup at this markup level in here, pricing markup. Now, the difference is, I would add a markup at product level for things like freight. So if I know it's cost me three seventy five, but I got to buy you know two hundred at a time, and there's um, you know, fifty bucks freight. The actual cost for this is going to be something like that plus you know, it might be three point whoops three point five percent or something like that on top of it. That covers the cost of your freight handling all that sort of stuff. So this is your cost price calculated here. Then you do your markup on top of all that later on. So that's how I would handle that. I wouldn't be putting a markup here unless it's something very specific. Um, but I wouldn't be just add, trying to add markup here because it's too difficult to maintain later. Um, yes, I'd like to override that because I've now done something. Awesome. Hinge, same again, you go into Hinge Editor, you can go to Pricing, choose whichever hinge you want. Let's just choose this one here. Um, you put in your cost price here. You can, again, there's your markup, there's your labor rate if you want to add labor to it. Um, I'm going to come back to labor. Uh, materials, manage materials. Um, so if I go to, let's start with the panel because they're the easiest one to start with. Go to Pricing here. Again, do I have a, a part code? Uh, square meter price, linear meter price. Generally, you're going to go for a, a square meter price on panel material. So this one here might cost you, uh, if it's a whiteboard, you know, it might be $12.50 a square meter or something like that. Cool. Save that. Yep. Uh, again, I wouldn't do an extra markup here unless you're doing doing those, um, adding in a, a, extra cost of those materials. Um, price tables, these ones here. This is if you've got doors. Actually, I didn't show you the doors. So if I went to something like uh, this one here and went edit, I want to edit one of these. This is where you can go in here and you can see I've got a, a, a width by height. So there's a height, that's the width of the door, and this is my price table in here. So, uh, and these ones get assigned to doors. When you go into your materials manager, and if I choose a door, go to door pricing, same thing, manage price tables, and I've got the same thing in here. So I'm going to choose whichever one I want. Let's choose this one here. I want to edit one of these. Let's work out what it is. There we go. So this is the price table. You can specify these. You can add rows and columns, uh, add, remove, duplicate. You know, same again. Add. You can cut and paste this as well from an Excel spreadsheet. You can paste it in here, which makes it easier. Um, so you can do those sorts of things. Uh, and that's under Materials Manager. Um, there's Materials Manager here, or under Managers. Go back to man, uh, Materials Advanced. You got the Manager on the last one there. You also got Hardware and Managers. Uh, there's the pricing tables for those materials. Um, you got extrude if you're doing extrusions like for your um, uh, finger pulls and things like that, you can do that uh, and trim. So if you've got new trim, uh, I don't have any set up in here yet. That's only a new area, uh, but this has the same sort of thing in here. It's got the same thing. You go in here and you can edit the tables where I don't currently have one. It's currently all blank, so um, so I don't have it in here to to test yet. But this is where you can actually specify where they actually are and how to edit the, uh, trim pricing. Now labor. Labor is a difficult one because it's also rel relative to, uh, it's quite often easy to see in the tables what we're going. There's, we have 25 different labor fields we can use, different types of labor. What do you want to call it? You can create your own. What do you want to do with it? Um, where it makes more sense is in the form. So you go, okay, labor one is cutting. It costs me, um, yeah, I'm paying 85 bucks an hour for that. Um, and that's by part and by time. So that's by, yep. So that's how you calculate this now. So 85 bucks an hour would make sense for cutting, and I'm cutting each part. The other way you can do it is by cabinet, 
and this is making mix and match. This is where you need to know, understand how you're doing pricing, how you want to do pricing. Do you want to actually chart price your labor or do you want to add your labor in as part of your costs or do you just want to do a material cost or a fixed cost? So many different ways to do pricing. You need to know what it is, but they're all here depending on what you want to do. So um, example, cutting an, an end panel. Yes, I'm cutting a part and I'm working at 85 bucks and you can work out that in the next level how many minutes per square meter of material. So you can work that out as well. But this is my hourly rate. And for every time I cut, I'm doing that. Um, what's another one here? So by part, by area. So I can go by cabinet, by by time or by area. Um, sorry, the first one was by time. Yes, exactly right. So it works out how much time it's going to take. Um, you can also, yeah, and it's, so there's multiple ways you can do this by cabinet, by area. Um, how much area is in the cabinet, work out how much time it's going to take to do all that as well. So there's a lot of different variables in here. Um, so labor rates is work out how many square meters it is and how what how many minutes that all equates to. Again, this is something you need to play with. It does work if you spend the time and effort to get it set up. If you want to do that, it absolutely does work, but it takes a lot of effort to set it up. Um, part rate, um, and this is where okay, if you do it by part, this is where so what you need to do is go into the form here because again, it depends which one you're doing. So each part, let me look at that. Say so the okay, a back. How long do I spend on the back of each one of these parts? How long do I spend cutting this? Okay, a, a back can take me you know, five minutes to do one of those. Uh, edging, well, that takes all about you know, 30 seconds, so it's only going to be half a minute. Um, you can work out boring well on the machine. Well, it takes three minutes on average to do each one of these parts. This we can work out by part, by time, and each section can work out. There's my bottom. There's my, again, complex, depending on how you want to do it. Um, personally, I wouldn't be doing like this unless I was really pedantic on doing absolutely everything because this is, the more you put effort you put into it, the more results you're going to get out of it, the longer it's going to take. Um, so that's all these tables. I'm going to quickly run to here. If you have not something in a table, and this is where you can actually bypass a lot of this sort of stuff, instead of putting all the prices into all of these tables, I can go to here and go, this is my fallback. If zero in table, so if I have zero in my hardware my my handles table so handles if I have zero in a table charge ten dollars each done so this is your fallback and this is a quick and easy way to go well actually I know how to charge that I know where, how much they're worth I know my premium runners are always 40 bucks I know my, my, my metal side of the box are always twenty dollars you don't need to fill in the tables leave them all blank and just fill in this again multiple ways to do things how do you want to do it so um, you can do this as well so again materials I can just charge my carcass out 12 bucks a meter all my panels um, 40 bucks a meter you can do this and make it so much quicker and easier so you can set up pricing really quick we can set up really complex depends what you want this is all about you it's all here choose a bit you want and it comes back to how do I do this how do I set it up in here so this would all work exactly as I've set up here will actually work um, without the labor by setting up these tables here it's quick and easy to do um, choose choose what the types are Choose your markups, what you want to do here, and set up these ones here. Um, if you want to get it more accurate, again, the more accurate, the more time it takes, the more accurate results you're going to get. But that's going to cover 95% of your work already. So you can do that quite happily. The other thing you can do now, that's one area. There's one more area you can do if you have Cabmaster Designer Pro or Cabmaster Machining Premium. You need to have the Library Catalog Manager for the next bit. If I go to View, Library catalog, library catalog Manager. Now, if you've got Designer 3D or Designer Pro, you won't have this. Oh, sorry, Designer 3D or CL, you won't have this. Designer Pro and Premium do. The Library Catalog Manager gives you an extra area in all the cabinets in the catalog, which we did go through in one of the earlier videos. What it does, though, is you have, so for example, an F2900 floor two door, you can go pricing here. And you can say, okay, this cabinet here, I have a fixed price. So you go into here and you find fixed price, fixed sell right here. So this is going to be uh, $195. So that's $195. So now I go into here, open the cabinet, and it is, oh, it needs to update. Okay, um, it's $195, it will be $195 for the first, actually, sorry, cost price, fixed sell, fixed cost, that one there, $195. There we go. So I have a fixed price of 195 for the first 800 millimeters, and then I'm going to charge an extra $50 for every 100 millimeters above it. 
so you can get it you won't go less but it's always going to go up if you if you make the cupboard bigger it'll go up from there so this is another way you can do it and you have to go through each each cabinet but you can control every single cabinet here's my cost price or here and again what does this include does this include installation does it include hardware does it include my doors this is up to you you can say okay a floor one door a one door cabinet is always going to be charged at um, $85 and it's $85 for the first uh, you know, 500 millimeters and then uh, again it's just 25 bucks for every hundred mil above it something like that awesome so I've now got that set up in there so save and exit so the question for you is what does that include because I can do that and go fixed price there we go and turn all these ones off or I can say that fixed price is my carcass only but I'm going to charge sorry uh, my bench top not included um, my um, hardware not included so I'm going to charge my hinges and my handles and my runners <laughs> obviously two, a standard run door cover doesn't have runners but if the drawer it does um, does it include my doors no okay so I can do that so this is another way to do it so I can, okay this is my fixed price which I'm going to do from the library catalog manager it's 100 it's 85 dollars for that one door cupboard up to 500 mil I'm going to charge my doors my bench shops and my hardware separately as well and then then you only need to set up those three extra things in your tables or in your override tables so you can have half the so this can be off this can be off um, carcass can be off because you've already got a, you've got a hard-coded price in the other one so you don't want to double up on it uh, but I do want to charge for all these things so again how do you want to do it it's all in there there's easy way there's hard way you can mix and match anywhere area you like I know this is convoluted go back and watch this video over again because you go I need to do this I want a price fixed price in my library but I'm also going to charge for my hardware this is possibly what I've just done now it's possibly the most common way because you know what your carcass is you do a fixed price you don't need to worry about your machining because I've got my my two-door cupboard is always going to be 185 bucks plus the accessories work it out put your pricing into it once you've done your pricing one thing I really need to show you it once it's all set up you can then go and this is possibly not set up but I need to do it um, if you go to quotes you can do a quote you can do a stylized quote um, the beauty of this is you can actually pull out a quote you can get customized quotes as well you can contact cabmaster support and they'll help you out to get customized quotes there you go so this is in here it gives you all your details and you can do your price you can do your, your um, markup you can also do another one the reports is actually really good it's a quantities report if you do quantities there's one of those that'll work okay so this is the quantities this gives me every part of every cabinet um, I can see in here very quick clearly I have 28 hinges they cost me $10 each because it's in the override table there's my th my cost including GST um, you can have markup at the end of it depending on the customer as well um, and you go to page two and then there, there's a total of it in there um, I don't have fixed prices on for these cabinets they're not set up I didn't um, this is so this is how you do your pricing pricing is all there it is a complicated area but it's also not so don't get overwhelmed look at it again one thing at a time what do I want to do how do I want to do it um, fixed price is a really quick and easy way to do it fixed price plus the things you buy in that's if I was going to suggest hey if you want to get pricing running really quickly that's how you do it um, using the override table this is quick and easy to do these so my handles are ten dollars each my hinges are this if you get a buy in another product and say I've, I've got a I've got a new hin handle but it's going to cost me a little bit more well go into the handle editor add it into here say create a new handle and add a new price in if the price isn't zero it won't use this one this is only this is only your fallback so if the price is zero in the table it'll use this if the price isn't zero it'll use a price in the table so you can set up pricing and use both you can have the best of both worlds it'll use one or the other it won't use both it'll only use whichever one is actually relevant at the time thank you very much for watching hopefully this makes sense um, again it is complicated but it also isn't break it down one thing at a time thank you very much for watching